Good morning, guys. How you doing today? Welcome to the Jerkmonger Show, the live morning edition. I'm only going to be on for about 20 minutes or so, so I just wanted to kind of catch up with everybody and uh, do some uh, sketching. I'm going to be working on some concept art for my my new comic that I just uh, I'm planning on knocking out for the children. Let's see if I can fix my video quality here. I wonder why. I wonder why. I wonder what that's all I got. Anyway, let me know if you guys see this pretty good. Uh, give me a uh, give me a, a quick show of hands if if it's looking clear enough to you. It's a little blurry to me. I can't tell. Hold on, I'm gonna tear out my page. I'm gonna push this here. So. Kind of just uh, going over some concept uh, iterations here of my character. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fix my camera a little bit differently too. Do this real quick. Just do this right quick. Let me put this here. That might help. Let's see if that helps. All right, so um, Bubba Squatch, as uh, some of you guys know, is a character of my own, uh, my own invention. He is a um, a Sasquatch uh, that happens to have been raised by an elderly couple, <clears throat> uh, and becomes. Uh, it's a story about about uh, tribalism and about uh, racism, sorta, um, but with a twist. So not so much not so much racism as it is otherism. You know, he's a monster and people don't know how to relate to him. So that's kind of the, the theory in my story here. Um, so what I want to do is I want to just keep on working up some designs for him. What I was working on there, I have this idea where, where I'm going to take this character into another dimension. And so of reality, and I want to kind of, I want to kind of, but I'm kind of giving away some story elements that are farther along. So let's see if I can just uh, can do some more sketching. I've got to get more used to drawing Bubba. He's been living in my head for a while. And you guys feel free to to ask me any questions in the chat. I think, uh, I think my chat's working. He's got a cool, cool trucker hat. I'm really a trucker hat. It's kind of going to be something else. Let me fix my white balance. My brightness. It's kind of a, kind of a crazy thing here. Because you guys can't see anything, I bet. I think that helps. I think that's going to help. So Bubba is not a an aggressive character at all. He's he he might even be characterized a bit like a pacifist, but he's not a pacifist. He's just he's just passive. Does that make sense? And uh, he's a gentle soul. Is what he is, frankly. Let's see. Hey, isn't that Devin Graham? <laughs> Hey, Elliot, how, how you doing, man? Uh, do you think Sasquatch are interdimensional beings? That's interesting, man. There's a lot of um, some of my concepts about about this comes from some some various uh, documentaries and research uh, uh, papers that people have put together. At least, even if they're just for fun, just the, the idea of how the myths have been put together about Sasquatch. And some people think he is interdimensional, and I I actually kind of like that as a an element of of um, his character that he's not that when you see them something else is going on, which is actually a part of my story. I've kind of integrated that idea into into his his backstory. First, you have to ask the question: Why is he a redneck? A redneck uh, Sasquatch, and then we got to figure out. How does one become a Sasquatch? Late night rabbit hole YouTube. What does that mean? I don't get that.
feel like I like creating his look. He's a very large guy. He's got to be at least seven feet tall, uh, maybe eight feet. Not quite eight feet. I think that's too tall. But seven feet's a good height. He's he's gigantic. I don't know. What do you guys think? Eight feet? Eight feet good, good dimension? It seems a little excessive. So yeah, man. So he's a he's a, he's a cool dude though. Hangs out in the woods, clearly. So uh, some of my plans include doing a. Um, I'm gonna do a a, a web comic of this character. Uh, he's gonna have his own kind of like a, I'm gonna treat it like a like a newspaper comic strip. So it's gonna be just to kind of ground him in a in a world. So you could always go reference him in multiple media sources. Sorry about that. And uh, hopefully, you'll fall in love with this guy. I, I am. I'm. A, I, I love this character. He and as I'm developing his story, I'm having a ball with that too. Yes, sir, Lafayette. What's up, man? Hey, Lafayette. I got 15 minutes here. Want to jump on? Want to jump on? Want to talk about it? You got time? Let me see here. I'm sending I'm sending it just in case anyway. All right, uh, so I just sent it to you in, oh, uh, on Twitter. So Matt says, uh, meaning going on a YouTube ride down UFO video. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. I can see that. I can see that. All right, let's see. Let's see. Get back on track here. A rabbit hole, yeah. I, I love all that stuff, man. I'm a big fan of cryptozoology ancient alien theory i love all that stuff uh kirby Kirk, when, when i realized that that's what kirby was doing most of his time most of his most of his career then I, then it, it kind of congealed for me and i was like yes that's what that is oh and you know i've always been fascinated with that sort of idea even if it's even even if it's not true it still it still kind of lends itself to like a narrative that that comes from just just general just general fun, you know, that makes sense. It's just fun. It's just fun to think about these type of things in that way. So I'm, I'm, as I'm, as I continue to draw Bubba, I'm also kind of tightening up how I see him overall, right? I, I'm tightening up his, uh, his look. So that so that he becomes something here. I might have to switch over to my other earbuds here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hear. I hope I can. I hope I can. I hope so. If Lafayette jumps in. At some point, says Matt, all of these creatures and aliens conspiracies join together. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And why not? You know, it's just like I said, it's it's I don't necessarily although although I, I I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I think that there might there's a good possibility there might be some sort of creature out in the woods. Send me another invite through Hangouts. Uh, I just sent you the link through Twitter, Lafayette. You just click on the link and it'll take you to Hangouts. Cause I don't know how to use Hangouts so much. I don't know how to use the, the Hangouts so much. Eh? Maybe I can figure well, no, it's just gonna stop me here. Um, so, so what I did, I have done here, I'm very limited Lafayette. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's do that then. Should you be sharing that here, Lafayette?
Running out of time, running out of time. I don't know if this is the right one or not, but we'll try. All right. Okie dokie. Let's see if this works. I love it how on my live streams, I'm just spending all my time trying to figure things out. I should have done this sooner. All right. Here we go. See, that works. Okay. So where am I at here? All right. Let's see. 3D Robin says, hey, Elliot, is Bubba Squatch eventually going to become a comic? Yes. Yes, he is. Oops. I'm clicking all over the place. Sorry, guys. Uh, hey, good morning. Good morning, Pixel Trader. What's going on, man? So, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be releasing this on Webtoons. And then from Webtoons, it's going to go into... Uh, go into... Uh, an Indiegogo campaign. What my, my plan is to to launch a a different variation of it. Oh snap! What's up, man? Hey, hey! Oh goodness gracious! Let me lower my volume here. I'm gonna allow. Oh, this is like this is guys. This is a first. This is a an exclusive first here on my show. Hanging out with Lafayette. What's up, brother? You know, just uh, watching you doodle. Yes, yes, yes. I should have called this Epic Doodles, right? Hey, you know. Is, is it Epic? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Sure, why, why, not? why not? Why can't it be Epic? Uh, you know, it can. You know, you're, can. You're already insulting me. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> can be Epic. Yes. So, so yeah, man. So, uh, yeah, I'm planning. My, my plan is to, to launch a comic strip iteration of this con character on webtoons and then go from webtoons i will uh i'm while i'm doing that strip it's going to be a very like a weekly strip it's not going to be too intense so i way i can knock it out and get it done the idea is to kind of introduce everybody to the to his universe and what his world looks like at least from a very sur uh, very you know thousand foot view level and then go into later on uh an actual adventure that he embarks on yeah i mean you basically just want to do it like you said a, a strip like like the old like the spider-man strips you see in the comics yeah like um yeah like like um like a newspaper strip yeah 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 because yeah. Yeah. i just read um i just read riley brown's webtoon comic who's riley brown? Uh, is his name i think it's riley brown he draws uh for marvel he does a lot of deadpool and spider-man okay okay I don't um know. You just drop one on there but yep, you just yep. Stumped, you just stumped the host. That's not cool. We got to talk about this. <sighs> yeah, you are. That's true. You are the host. I can't be doing that. <sighs> Matt says you used to listen to uh, you used to listen to George Nori coast to coast a lot. Great place to pick up story. Yeah, no, no kidding. I like that show a lot too. He's a weird. He's a he's a weirdo, but I love them. Uh, Pixel Trader says doing good, man. I wound up drawing live on War Campaign last night and was stressing out about what to draw. Then I thought, what would Elliot do? That's what I think about all the time. I think, what the hell am I doing? Tommy says serious or comedy. Uh, it's going to be, it's not, it's a, it's going to be kind of in the. Someone said it earlier. I think in a, another video I posted, they said that it kind of reminded them of Bone. So it's kind of has that flavor. It's an it's an it's almost in all ages. Although I think at some point in the story, it's going to take a dark turn, and then it's going to become a weird a weird story. But I I that's on purpose. That's a that's an aesthetic choice that I'm making to to bring out a. Um, a, a level of drama that's that is resembles life you know sometimes in life you are on track and everything's going normal and then all of a sudden something some kind of tragedy happens and it's unlike anything that you would ex ever experience and i, and I want to put bubba through the ringer with that kind of stuff so where does it take place so so far i i, I want to do some more research because i to be honest in my head it, ever since i came up with this character it exists in the ozark mountains but um, I don't I don't know that that's actually a, a legitimate, you know, hot spot for is it really authentic to say this at all? That it, because this, he doesn't really exist. 
I mean, you could put them in any any setting, any mountains, any country. It doesn't really. It's the uh, amazing Sasquatch, well, more of an urban legend. So. He is, but he's also a redneck. Oh well, I mean, your Sasquatch is you know he has character, right? He, like you said, yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's basically a, a truck driver type, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so in my story, I think what he, what I have so far. And I wonder if this is even wise to share too much. A pixel trader says Willow Creek, California, maybe. But I want to. I want to kind of like. Uh, I want to. I want his parents to be kind of like. Um, how do I say this? Uh, uh, oh, it's a city that celebrates Bigfoot. Uh, that's interesting. Um, I want it to kind of be like a, a southern-ish community, you know, like kind of like what happens like uh, some of those families that are real poor. Uh, here in the, in the, I wouldn't say the southeast, but more like uh, going towards the Midwest South, you know, those areas of the country where where there's a lot of poverty. This guy, his his family, his par- his adopted parents uh, are lived up in the in the in the hills. You know, almost like a remember that movie Pumpkinhead? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. kind of how that community was like. They were kind of they were very poor, very rural, uh, uh, white people. Um, a lot of a lot of farmer farmers or people with land that they can't farm or stuff stuff like that. So he's a his his adopted father. It was a mechanic, and um, so far what I've decided is that uh, this character this particular character is very intelligent, right? So I'm celebrating the idea of that. Harry and the Hendersons was great. It, it was, man. It was. Um, what? Um, I guess I could say what. So he's basically he's like the town hero. Would you say? He's not so. So, okay. so there you of, go. Part of the story is that he's he's his by virtue of his adoption, he's been assimilated into into the community. However, they don't accept him into the community. So that's why I kind of touched on the idea of possible like like a racist situation. Like he's got a bit of that in his in his uh, that challenge in his life. Um, I want to explore that a little bit. Um, I want to explore a little bit of a. Uh, Although that's not the focus of this. That's not the point. You know, he's a monster. It's more about being afraid of the other, you know, of, of what you think. Is yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I mean, because, I mean, racism, I mean, he's the only one. So it's more, I guess, more like prejudice, right? Because, yeah, prejudice. I think that's right. That's right. But I'm going to explore this con- concept. Uh, but it's not just your typical, like, when the, the caricature of, like, uh, uh, that people have painted about uh, modern white Americans, none no, of that nonsense, not an alt right thing, but but country people, how they don't, they're reacting to him. He's a very sophisticated being, uh, but he doesn't, um, he doesn't, but he doesn't really, he's not a showy. In fact, the character barely even speaks, if at all, throughout the story so far. Oh. Man, I like, I like talking to you, man. This is cool. You're not, you're not as, you're not as critical of me here i was expecting more of that i'm surprised oh no it's it's all there i just don't want to put it out right now <laughs> feel free man feel free see one hand holding the phone the other one's writing stuff down that's uh-huh. really like oh my god if he saw this this would be horrible <laughs> but i don't want i don't want to go that route yeah. but you, have a you good, know you have a good voice for radio you're better than me so here's here's canada bear oh Let's see that. So, can you see it? I'm gonna. Uh, how do I do this? I'm gonna focus on you. Hold on. More like, how can I make it closer? Tell me about him. I'm just the artist on the book. Canada Bear is basically um, he's basically Superman in Canada, but he's a bear. That's pretty much it. The guy <laughs> that wrote it. It's nothing really original. He wrote. He wrote. He's already wrote six issues. I've already drawn three of them. Uh, but um. You know, Canada Bears, when people see him during the day, he's actually just a big hairy man. Um, but when he yanks on his tie, it turns into a cape and he becomes a big bear. No kidding. Uh, I didn't know you were making a book, dude. Uh, yeah, it's already, like I said, three issues are already out. I'm in the middle of drawing four. How long have you been doing it? Oh, I've only, I laid out issue two. I didn't, I didn't like draw the whole thing. I drew all of issue three and I'm now working on four. But you, you're, you're, you work full time, right? Oh yeah! Right now, as I'm speaking to you, I am in my work vehicle, um, just chilling in Compton, California. Uh oh! Hey. Yep, yep, yep. Um, right, like I'm like 
right outside the courthouse. So, you know, I get to see all the all the crazy stuff. Everything nice. you've heard of Compton, seen of Compton, maybe seen in a movie, just take it as fact. <laughs> so, take, take it's it 100% fact. It's 100%, so, huh? All right. Oh, people ask me all the time, what's it like in Compton? I'm like, uh, what do you think? Just whatever your mind is coming up with right now, just stick with that. And Is it really gangster? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Gangster, or is it gangster? I, I call it, uh, see, I, the zombies wake up at a certain time and just loiter the streets. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like well, big time. Too. It's crazy. Like the cops that talk to me out here and tell me stories. It's, yeah, it's fun. You know, it's funny. I, I, um, I for a while, I really entertain moving out to California. I still would, I still would like it. I don't know how, I don't know how which can... part of California is the question. LA. I like LA. Oh, okay. Because I've lived in all of California. That's why. Okay. What's your favorite spot in Cali? <sighs> Probably San Diego. I lived there for two years. Huh. I lived in Frisco for two years. That sucked. Um, Isn't it really expensive in San Diego? No, uh, it's worse than the Bay Area, so never live in San Francisco or any surrounding areas. Okay. Um, that's the worst. LA's probably second. LA's really expensive. Yeah. Um, and you know, San Diego's okay, because San Diego, is, it's a pretty small city, so you wouldn't necessarily live in the city. Mm. Um, but it's super chill. I mean, San Diego's just... Yeah, it's 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 nice out there. And then uh, you know, lived in all of NorCal and so on and so forth and did live you, in LA now. Did you live in any of the um by the by the the vineyards? My wife always wants to go there. I did. I lived in Sacramento for a long time and it's only about an hour from Napa, maybe an hour and a half. Wow. Yeah. Yep, the last yep. time I was there, I, I'm I'm genuinely impressed, man. When last time I was there, I um uh, I was driving my sub, I had a rental car and I was driving around doing some on some business. And I almost got lost and ended up in Sacramento because I was looking for the for the the was it the I I ten versus the one ten and I got lost. Yeah, that would get you lost because the the ten and the one ten are in L.A. and those are in Sacramento doesn't have those. Yeah, but I kept looking for I forget what exit I was looking for and it you probably looked for like the I five or something like that. I don't know. I was I was I was working off of a, an older version of my. Um, my uh well the, the last phone i had i had a gps and it it wasn't functioning properly because i was having trouble with my battery and then so i, I kept so I, I finally just stopped at a mcdonald's but the mcdonald's had no uh, off the highway I, I don't remember where i was but i it had no plugs in so i can charge my phone so i just stopped there just to relax and not freak out because i was like i don't know where the hell i am <laughs> yeah so, no i'm uh, telling you if, if you ended up in sacramento and but you were trying to go to la that's like six hours away well i was in it turns out i was in la i just kind of bypassed my exit kept waiting for some some magical spot to end up at and i just mm -hmm. kept driving mm -hmm. and then i saw the sign you're this much this far away from sacramento i said oh that's cool that's like wait a second because i remember sacramento a lot from even stevens that old disney show yeah yep so i was like oh yeah that's wait a minute that's not where i'm going <laughs> that's i don't know anything about sacramento and i need gas <laughs> so <laughs> you'd be going way out of the way yeah, yeah, that day was actually a, a long day because it. I had just gotten into LA, and I I went to visit some buddies of mine that work at at um at uh, Warner Brothers Ranch. And oh so, yeah. So I was trying to I I I had had a hell of a time getting out there because my again I think what happened was I had my phone on a lot during my my plane flight, and my battery was draining. So when I got into I didn't realize that's when I first learned that oh man the uh, GPS eats up your battery fast. So then from there. I, 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 it was malfunctioning. I should have restarted the phone. So it kept sending me into these weird neighborhoods when I thought, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting close to, uh, I forget where that's at. Um, that, 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 where, where's all the animation done at? That's that town. Talking about Burbank? Yeah, Burbank. So I said, oh, it's like on, on the map, it looks there. And my, my GPS was malfunctioning. So it kept sending me to these weird neighborhoods that I was like, oh, but then I got, I was like, man, this reminds me of that old show Chico and the Man. I was like, all right, that's cool. And I was like, this <laughs> you got something positive out of being lost. Yeah. <laughs> there so you I go. Was like, All right. I'll just keep on going. So finally, finally, I said, wait a minute. And I had to stop because then, then at the time, I also this is before they created those uh, fast charge uh, chargers. Yeah, so I was it wouldn't. I had a note, whatever that it was, and it wouldn't charge fast enough. So 
yeah, I was stuck out there for a bit anyway, but, uh, but I got, I, I made it. And then, so the, on my way back, I was like, oh, cool. I had a great experience. I drove by the Disney studios. I didn't get to go in, but I just drove by. I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then after that, I was like, well, how do I get back to the hotel? So where I was really trying to go was downtown LA, right across from the Staples Center. There was this wow. little boutique hotel that I was trying to get to, and I, I could barely find it. I was, I, I, I if anybody that knew me saw me, they'd just m make fun of me the whole time. They, I, I looked like a damn fool, but I'm all right now. I made it. You survived. You made it back home, it, it appears. So apparently, apparently yeah. I made it. Yes, you know, yes. At least in, in uh, one piece. Let me see. Uh, Matt says, I grew up in San Diego, mostly East County. Uh oh. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pixel Trader says, Our housing prices are shooting through the roof here in San Diego. Hmm. Sounds suspect. Tommy says, It sounds like people move a lot in, in U.S. Here in, in Finland, it seems that people root in, to one city. Well, it's because you live in Finland. Yeah. I mean, you can't compare Finland to even California, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. there's so many. Every city in California is so vastly different. What what's uh well that's true that's true because I can and I gotta tell you man I kind of dug the the whole uh East LA Mexican vibe there I really dug oh. it oh yeah it's it's yeah that's I mean there's so many pockets in LA that are just nothing but Mexican grocery stores I mean everything everything's Mexican you know yeah, yeah. I mean you, if you want like you know Mexican food you're not gonna be going wrong in LA. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's that's for sure. I but, even, you know, go ahead. But Rodwell Stevens says hi. So hey Rodwell. I'm glad that you say hi. I don't you know are we are we friends? I don't, don't do I know you, you are now. I know you now. Yeah. So give him your social security number. He'll take care of the rest. <laughs> that's that's the Lafayette I know. Uh oh. He's, he's getting warmed up with me. He's like okay just, I, just give okay. it to him. Come on. He's giving so, in already. I am going so to be. We, uh, go ahead. So where are we drawing back there? Are we drawing a different angle? Okay, here we go. Yeah. So a lot of what I'm doing, a lot of the drawings that I'm doing are, I have a bunch. Of, I I don't. I put them away. I'm getting ready to go to a convention to the, this afternoon. A lot of the drawings that I have are, um, a lot of it's just me studying him and trying to make sure I can find like the. If I if you saw the other video, I think you did. Um, I had a I showed off a lot of my my recent like my story bible of, of at least the drawings of and sketches of this character and it's yep. evolved over the last five six seven years um and the reason why it's evolved was because it I, I'm trying to approach these projects in a way that I can actually accomplish them because I never intended to draw comics the way that I draw my commission work um I did try to do that when I was working in comics for a minute but it's just, it's such an inefficient style and i and i still love animation style by above everything else it's just that most superhero pe people don't like that look so much on superheroes mm -hmm. where i can consume it like that all the time like i love all the warner brothers animation i love the animation on voltron the recent stuff so, so all that good stuff i enjoy um and what i like about it is that it's the style is dictated by the need for efficiency so it it necessarily has to be simplified so that it can be easily repeated or you know where you have a, a you, it's it's about shapes so I, I whenever i draw these things i always get a lot of compliments from animators because they always say things like oh I, li I love your shapes so at first i was like well you love my my body that just seems weird um but <laughs> <laughs> it's true though it's you know what's funny is when i do conventions mm -hmm. people well, I come to the table and, you know, you know, of course, they look through the book and the prints and everything. But they ask, you know, people that don't draw, what's the easiest way to learn to draw? Like, how did you learn to draw? And I always tell them the same thing. Look, all drawings are just shapes. OK, yeah, yeah. first, if you just go back to the basics and learn shapes, then you'll learn how to put them together to come up with what you're trying to come up with. And I'll do draw it in front of them. So I'll break it down. Look. I take this circle and then this circle, look, okay, look, it's already forming a head. Okay, look, a body, I'll, I'll just use a couple of squares and rectangles. And they're just in awe, but I'm like, I didn't do much of anything. That's just the basics. Like, there we yeah. go. Yeah. And it's true because on Canada Bear, everything, the book looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. Because like you said, I have to draw the same thing, the bear in every panel just about. Right. right. So if we had a bunch of detail, I would hate my life. 
Right, right. That, that, that's exactly right. That's why I love guys like, uh, you know, Chris Somney. Yep. Uh, he worked for Marvel for a good minute there. And mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Evan Shaner that works at DC. I, I love those styles so much. It's this, uh, and it kind of goes back to, uh, who was that guy? Uh, uh, Erge, the guy that worked on Tintin or Tintin. Yep. He was, he kind of developed that whole, the, the art of the simple line concept. So, so uh, in comic books. So he, um, so that, but for me, it's just not that different. Somebody says Captain Caveman. Yeah, I could see why he looks a little like that. That's not a bad, necessarily a bad uh, thing there. So uh, Michael, Mike says, how do you, how did the new Thundercut Cats roar look to you? I, I you know, I don't care. <laughs> I think it's all right. I don't, it's not my Thundercats, but it, you know, it's all right. It'll, it'll, we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Uh, it's, it's just a cartoon. People got so upset about it. It's, yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm 40 years old. What do I want to watch that for? You're 40. Like, you look young, man. I'll, I'll check it out, but I, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. okay. I'm, I'm watching Rick and Morty. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. If, if you can dig Rick, uh, Rick and Morty, you can dig any of that stuff. Rod Will yeah. says, I pre ordered your red and black book. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Now we are friends, Rod. We are friends. Oh, and you know yeah. what? You can talk about my body anytime. Um, oh, well. <laughs> wait, wait. What? Huh? It's a little much. What? Yeah. Did that slip out? Sorry, I was. Yeah. Sorry. So, so a lot of the um, the aesthetic of my, my my drawings, and I went through a phase where I was drawing just that style because I wanted to practice it. I wanted to practice developing a look that was uh, aesthetically pleasing, um, and also had a good opportunity for for impactful action. So this style is definitely kind of where i'm at the characters on this page i have an idea that there's a, a there's a character in my story that he's actually in some other stories i've developed um i call him the shadow man and he's gonna be like my devil uh Critias, okay. what's up tony says tintin is awesome he and lucky luke i absolutely love asterisk too yeah i love all that stuff and that's why that's that's what kind of got me into this style was looking at comic strips also and i learned to just appreciate that differently so that's a lot of and i love how you can be you can emote and act so much with cartoon you can't always do it that's why a lot of times jim lee stuff always looks real like stiff and or not so much stiff in the physical form but their expressions are are very they're almost over they're almost repeated all the time but oh yeah no jim lee jim lee's is the same i mean it's almost like we get the same 20 poses out of jim lee yeah 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 and that's all right you know, i mean i used to think i used to make fun, fun of him for that but that's really that's just his way of making taking a style that again that people like and turning it into something. That's what that was the magic of John Buscema and John Byrne, all those guys. They and Jack Kirby even they came up with a look that that they could repeat. Now to us it was a cool quote unquote style, but in actuality it was just them trying to to make money because there's no way you can make money at this stuff drawing at that level, especially these days where you, where most of us now are penciling and inking our own work. There's no way we can keep a schedule. It's so true. It's like, I think you were talking to, yeah, you were talking to Mike Miller about that. And the, which artist were you guys talking about where he drew, he could do like three pages a day and he didn't really care about quality. He was just trying to crank things out. I forgot who he was talking about. Uh, not Ditko. Um, maybe it was Ditko. Oh, but just about how he just was like, you know what? I need to make, I need to make the story uh something that you can follow not all about detail you know you know that's and then that was definitely a philosophy that kirby uh, brought to the table because he was he was always uh you know if you look at some of his work even when he was doing captain america in the beginning uh when he with uh with the very early years of captain america he um he 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 illustrated more as you see his work progress i've even seen him do that he wasn't like the most incredible draftsman in the world but he 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 was definitely, he was a better, he, I saw some of his portrait work, for example, and it was actually really tight. So, but then you fast forward to Marvel, the Marvel era, and the, when he was developing Fantastic Four, you can see that he kind of started to shift into very, into more like geometric shapes to represent stuff. His inking started to evolve, or at least the shapes he would create for his inkers to ink. And it just started to turn into just an efficiency system so he can tell stories. And I think that's where we need to really focus on. That's why I love this style so much, because it allows me to be a storyteller, not just a, a draftsman. Um, yeah, and I, like I told you before, I prefer your style in this way. Like when you did that Batman pinup with um, Sandman. 
I said, yeah. uh, uh, Quake Fate. Yeah. It's, it was the simple style, you know, it was just, it, look, and it, it looked great, you know? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate like, that. Because so, it had more, it had more energy, you know what I mean? Well, when we take stuff like Jim Lee's, it doesn't have as much energy because, like you said, it's so much detail and it's kind of stiff. Mm. Mm. So, and I'm not trying to take anything away from him either, but because you know he has his hustle, but I, you can certainly understand to your point. You're st- you're 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 observing those 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 stylistic choices that you know they are what they are. They they uh they they created that for a specific reason. He was successful. That's why he's he's where he's at today. And I'm I'm not, but but yeah, I mean you're right. Because, I mean, because we're not though, you know, we it's Jim Lee, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's certain guys you're like, yeah, I like his stuff, and I'll always like his stuff. But you know, it doesn't mean I'm gonna buy it. I know I love. I have artists that I love their stuff. I'll never buy their stuff. <laughs> Mike but, Mike Mike W says detail haters. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this Mike. whole thing's turned into. Next time we I, I do the show, I want you to be you to hang out with me in Lafayette, man. We're gonna be the the three the three Stooges. Uh, Critia says, "Pixel Trade, I want to sleep for the day." I don't know what that means. Critia says, uh, "When Elliot, when are you headed to MegaCon today?" I'm leaving. Uh, Andy's coming to pick me up uh, around twelve thirty or so, so we can head out. Uh, so, oh, MegaCon is this weekend, huh? Yeah, there's a Tampa MegaCon show. They, there's Orlando, which is the bigger show, and then there's yeah. one they've been trying to grow here for the last couple of years. Last year sucked. It was a Last year was when we got hit by the hurricane. So, or, just, or it happened right after the hurricane, and a bunch of people still didn't have any money. <laughs> They're like, "Yeah, we're not coming." So it was a bomb show. But hopefully this year, or maybe that was, maybe that was two years ago. I don't remember now. But it's uh, it's it's growing. It'll 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 get better. It's just we just got to give it some time. And it's a good show for me because it's right here in my backyard. So, yeah. Uh, did they get any uh, any celebrities or big names going to that one? Yeah, and I would pay more attention to it if I thought I could even indulge in that. But I, 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 every time I do these shows, I'm just sitting at my table drawing, drawing, drawing. I don't even get up. Yeah, so yeah, same here. I mean, same here. I don't get up. I mean, I meet most other artists, bef- you know, before the show opens. So listen, man, one of these days we got to get together and do like a live sketch thing where we just sit down and sketch together. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that'd be great. Um, we before a- I, we cut out, go ahead and explain all these characters to everyone. These characters, yeah. Um, so okay, so one of the ideas I talked about the, the Shadow Man. I think he takes different forms. I'm very fascinated with the idea of. I was just listening to an interview on Joe Rogan with uh, Jordan Peterson talking about the origins of like myths and religion. A lot of Bruce, uh, Bruce Joseph Campbell stuff, and the idea about this dragon in the cave. You know, kind of like what you saw in Lord of the Rings with Smog having you know hoarding all that gold so the idea that 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 within the time that the concept of chaos there's also uh there's also an opportunity for 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 reward but you just don't know that's the nature of chaos it's an interesting theories but i like the kind of putting that into my story so the villain i think this is my main villain i have another character that i've developed i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna hold off on it for now because I want it to be a surprise, but uh, I think this is it's, it's you know evil is evil, so I don't I don't mind sharing this character. He's he's gonna be he's gonna have many names. I think I'm gonna give him a, he's gonna have one of his names is gonna be a a nod to Lovecraft. Um, he might be like a Shig something, just to kind of put put a little bit of that into my stuff. Cause I love Lovecraft work, Cthulhu and stuff like that. So he's the he one of his names is gonna be the dragon, but also the uh, the, the the morning star so he's going to be like a lucifer character i want to kind of hint at that so this this all my stories kind of have a bit of a religious tint to it yeah. so yeah yeah but it's mostly just for more for flavor than it is necessarily uh it's not it's not meant to be a a, a tool for proselytizing it's just i like the idea of my stories having a, a deeper deeper entrenched history and lore so these were other interpretations i thought this guy was creepy if this guy was talking yeah, he's cool. to you, I like him. I like uh, this is my favorite one here, though. This one right here. He, I like the idea of him looking kind of like a lizard, kind of, kind of. Uh, you know, he has that, and he's also easy to draw. <laughs> is that yeah. that's everything it's about for me? Is it easy to draw? Can I draw him over and over again? But this it's guy, it's always easier when you eliminate the nose. Things get easier. 
It does, and also it it, it makes when when I do stuff like that, it's almost like when I do the uh, the black eyes with the white dot. Yeah. Sometimes just that one little touch will give something a little bit more, uh, like a little makes it look a little more alien, a little just 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 outside of your your universe because everything else is not like that. So, and it's the same thing with the nose. If you take the nose off, I mean. He rides the line of looking like Beta Ray Bill, but that was such an easy design choice. They just made him bald and get, took away his nose, and then you have Beta Ray Bill. So I like this. This guy also, uh, I was a big fan of that animation, Osmosis Jones. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the villain in that story I always thought was a cool design. So I, I, I looked up his image, and I kind of borrowed some of that too here. I just like the idea of him looking like kind of like a creature or an insect or, or a lizard or something. This one's like a li more direct interpretation. In another story I have, my character fights a dragon that's a, made of shadow. And what he'll do is he'll he'll sink into shadow and looks like a looks like a cartoon shadow. And then he'll pop yeah. out and he's a real dragon. So it's, it's that. So I, I thought maybe I can interpret. It's the same character. I want to do like a shared universe concept. Um, I yeah, look, I he looks cool. Yeah, yeah. He, he's another interpretation, but I kind of... I was kind of leaning more towards this one. I like. I want him to look. I, I actually thought it might be cool if he just took on different forms. You know, even a, a Voldemort appearance. You know, so that's well, yeah. Because like you said, if he's playing, you know, in the sense of the devil character, you could you would assume he has one main form, like the one in the on the left in the cloak. Mm -hmm. But he could take he could take any form he wants, really. And yeah. yeah. And the main character won't necessarily know it's the same guy over and over, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we when we get a chance, I'll tell you more about the story and give you more a, a fuller synopsis of it, so you can get a better idea. So I'm gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna have some humor in it. Like I said, it's not. It's not supposed to be a downer. I'm not trying to explore those those other mm -hmm. themes just to to be political. I, I really don't want this to be that way at all. But I do like the idea of there being like a a general like like weight that people can relate to in this world. And um, so what I want to do is, you know, I, I like the idea that he's he's actually like super gentle, super kind, but everybody hates him. Everybody hates him on, on everybody from from he, I'm going to go through his whole life uh, when he was adopted, how he was found uh, and his his relationship with a particular female character uh, later on. Um, you know, you know what it looks like? It looks like an adult, like a, an adult version of the Lorax. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not a bad thing either. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can live with that. Yeah, Even I mean, what colors is he gonna be? Is he gonna be, like, is he, is he brown? Yes, this is gonna okay. be all brown, and tan. But I'm gonna leave his, yeah. I'm gonna leave parts of his face white. This is, an, this was another big design choice. I, I just made this yesterday because I was drawing him, and I, I was doing some. I, did, I created another. Well, there's a. He's gonna meet one of his kind eventually. Obviously, he's the only one of his kind here, um, at least in that town. But he's going to meet another one, but he looks way more like violent, way, way like he, and, and beat up and scarred. This is like the ideal version of that of that species. Um, and I thought <clears throat> when I was designing it, I was having a hard time because I did a lot of these like flicks and and, and feathered lines, and it was creating. It looked nice in pencil form, but when I would ink it, there was black everywhere. So it's almost like I don't, I can't. I need to make a distinction between these these different parts. So I thought, well, you know, it's kind of a cop out, but it's it's an easy way to do it. I'll just make his hair here be tan and white. So he's gonna have like a tan and white face, which is like a like a dog, you know. Uh, like Not the beard looks good. I mean, because the beard, I mean, the beard, the beard, um, it, it kind of makes it different. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if he just had a mustache, people will look at that like. He, like I said, he would look like a Lorax, or he would look like what's the character from, uh, like a Bugs Bunny cartoons? You know, the big red monster. Yeah, 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 yeah. You um, know what I mean? Like, yeah, what's that guy? You know, Sam or something, or or. Yeah, so you know, yeah, so it kind yeah. of just makes it different. But I think it looks cool. Yeah, yeah. So then, and I can play around with this graphic shape here to represent like a, a lighting, um, and then also, so this gives me a little bit of that space here to. It, it's now his face is easy to separate in the very early drawings that I did of him. He was almost all hair, which is cool in pen and ink. But I, 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 again, imagine me doing this for every time he appears. Yeah, no way. No way. We've got to simplify this as fast as possible. So I just I, I chose this as my route. 
I'm I'm happy with it. I'm really happy with it. No, it looks and, cool. And he's gonna he's gonna talk a little bit when he talks. He's gonna talk a little bit like like Chewbacca, but but not with all the roll rolling gurgling. He's gonna be more just earth earth. He's gonna do a lot of that stuff, kind of like my dog. Oh, okay. So he basically he has an acclimated to learning a language. Well, that's the thing. I I want him to transcend it because I don't think he he doesn't need to. And if if I think this character where he's from in this with his people or his tribe they i think he's telepathic so everyone is going to be able to communicate with him but he doesn't actually use english words he just kind of humps and harumphs and and herms yeah yeah and then i think that's going to what the my explanation for all that is that he's going to be he's actually communicating with all of them telepathically uh i'm not you uh. know it's, yeah. it's going to be like, you know, he's going to go, it's going to be as simple as, er, well, I knew that, you know, Bubba, but that's not what happened. You know, that kind of thing. They're going to relate to what he's saying and not even realize that, that he's not even using words. But that's something that, you know, I'll be like a little Easter egg. So you guys heard it here, you know. So for, for Webtoons, um, are you going to just drop a weekly thing? Like yes. what's, what's your plan? Okay. It's, and is it, was it only going to be a couple of panels? It's going to be a three to four panel strip. It's gotcha. it's not going to be related to the to this adventure that I'm crafting on the side. There's an okay. what I want to do is you know it's kind of like imagine um so it's almost like what happened in the '90s when they were taking all these old um, comic strips like Dennis the Menace that was just a single panel comic strip. Yeah, um, and then they made a movie out of it. So basically, I'm I'm kind of reverse engineering this so that. The real goal is to write that book, the graphic novel, and produce that. But before I get there, I just want to do this very fun, relaxing. Because he's a pacifist in a way. He's he's a very uh, he's very into like he has friends in the, his he's friends with the animals in the woods. So what I want to do is kind of do this short version and get readers acclimated to who this character is in his world. And then launch that launch a the movie version the the motion picture, Baba Squatch on Indiegogo as a book. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just like a like almost like an intro. Webtoons is just an intro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Except so, it'll be perpetual. And yeah, then, yeah. You know, like like I have a a story idea I have for this. Like I think it's gonna be my first trip. Um, it's basically gonna be him. He's gonna be sitting in his house, right? So he's a. Uh, he has a drink in his hand and he's watch it looks like he's watching television you're behind a television set like an old tv like the square ones the tubes and uh, it has the rabbit ears and all bent out of shape and he's you know he lives a kind of he lives a very simple lifestyle he doesn't need much right because he's he doesn't care about that stuff he's not interested in technology although he's a tinkerer so we'll we'll touch that on that next time but he um he's going to be he's going to be sitting down on his couch which which is busted and has springs sticking out and stuff and and he's got this drink in his hand. What looks like he's watching television. The light coming from the tube. Then the squirrels. One of his squirrel buddies is going to show up, and he's going to look, see, look at what he's looking at, and sit down next to him. Then the other woodland animals will tr trickle in, and the camera is going to come behind them, and they're just looking inside of a hollowed-out television, which is just like a makeshift fireplace. And that's all he's doing is watching. Ah, uh, gotcha. So basically, you, you're creating a Hallmark card. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <coughs> a real gentle calm character i, I I'm, I'm trying to pit his calmness against the 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 tension that's all around us these days like all the crazy arguing and the politics and all that stuff yeah yeah you know what kind of reminds me of is have you, did you ever read huck no i never read that that was that uh that was uh the Raphael, Raphael albuquerque and, yeah yeah um it's similar in the sense of huck is like the nicest guy but everybody thinks he's like mentally retarded basically but yeah. there's nothing wrong with him I, you know he's just the nicest great he works as a mechanic doesn't bother anyone but when you know shit hits the fan he's like he just he just knows what to do it's not like he distinctively looking for trouble he just like i can help why not you know i have yeah, the ability yeah. to help so you know um yeah, this yeah that's cool it's going to be mainly him with the animals and then he's yeah. going to interact with some of the town people that are that are that hate him you know so there's going to be a lot of so basically there's going to be if if i ever did a political concept it'd be like 
hey, what do you think about all this? And the guys are the guys that are in typical, you know, Americans are talk, having their conversation and, and getting angry about stuff and fighting. What do you think, Bubba? And he just looks at them and just walks away. Like he he does he doesn't want to get involved in that. It's, that's that's not necessary. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the graphic novel, he 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 runs the family business, even though his family has passed away. He's he's the mechanic for the town, which is why they tolerate him because he has a very valuable service or, or skill set. Um, so he fixes their cars and he also fixes their refrigerators and keeps things running. So he so he pre he pretty much looks over the town, even though they hate him. So he's an interesting Christ type that way as well. Anyway, you have a lot. You have a lot going on. Well, I like I said, when, when we get a chance, I'll tell you the story that I have planned, at least the some of the plot. I still I'm still working out some things. Robwell says Bubba Squatch would look cool as a vinyl toy. Mm. You know where I'm going. That's what I'm saying. Merchandise. But, you know, you have your book right now, The Red and Black. And then you got this one you're working on. And then you have the other story about about the uh, the married couple and how the wife ruins his life and turns into a monster. Um, oh, Dead Honeymoon. That's a... Yeah. There yeah, you go. I'm working on those ideas, but I, I had to figure out what was going to be the one that I thought was going to be the most, uh, um, you know, the, in deciding how I was going to approach this, I thought, what was the one one most marketable? Also, which one oh. had the, the most, um, um, what do you call it? Um, which one had uh, the what was, was the closest to being complete so that I could produce it sooner than later? Um, well, this one for sure would be more marketable. I, 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 you know, that's what I think. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to produce the strip anyway. And then if it does, it, it, and then I'm going to launch the campaign. If the campaign ever gets funded, then we'll know that nobody likes it, you know, but then I'll, and I'll, and I'll just move on to a different thing. But I think I'm, I like the idea enough as a strip at least. So I'll keep pursuing it. Um, the, some of the other ideas I have are still strong, but I, I have to, I've been, man, I've been writing stuff like this for a long time. I, I'm going to need help to craft specific things, especially when it comes to dialogue down the road. But but overall, I feel really good about my ideas. It's just that there's so many and they're not all tight enough. Um, I have one more that's that I told you was relating to this character. Uh, it's even tighter than this story. But that one is kind of like a and, and all these and most of these are designed to be one shots. I'm not going to I'm not, I'm not planning on doing any more with Bubba Squatch after this first story. Uh, except through the strip um, to keep it going. I and mean, if I did, it would be like a Hellboy thing where, you know, if it, it would have to be because everyone demanded it and then I was able to, to, to okay, that, then it warrants another volume. For yeah. An added, yeah, yeah. You know, added version of the story. Because I like the character. Let's see how he evolves and let's see how he, how he ends up uh, interacting with stuff. I think, I think what I have planned is going to be strong. I think um, it's going to be cool. Well, listen, guys, uh, I have to kind of wrap it up here. I need to prepare for the show today. I got a few things I got to take care of before I head over to the convention center. Uh, Lafayette, man, I love you, bro. Yeah, we'll catch up. Uh, like I said, we'll do a live drawing thing, uh, get as many people as we can. Yeah. And um, I'll draw Canada Bear for people, and they'll yeah. see how amazing he is. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds awesome. I'm excited for that. So. Uh, I'll give you a, a, I'll send you a message later on so we can try to schedule something as soon as possible. Uh, like I said, I'll sure. be busy this weekend, but maybe at night I'll be able to still draw something here or there. Oh yeah. Anytime. I mean, honestly, I'm, well, you know, I, I gotta make sure to check with your schedule too. I mean, just yeah, well, but when it comes to drawing, I mean, I'll be home today drawing for five hours, you know, knocking out two or three pages and, and all right. You know, all right. So. Mike W says, I think Michael Van Oming fits into the, the Somni category. Um, uh, he's man. No, he not so much now. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. He, Oming is like a, Oming's like a very rough, angry version of Bruce Tim. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> like a like an unpolished Bruce Tim. Yes. Yeah, not as good as Bruce Tim. Not as, I mean, no, he's not no, bad. No, no. He's just not as good as Bruce Tim. Um, no. Somni is more in line with some of the classic comic artists like, um, gee, was I can't remember the Milt. Was it uh, Kniff, Milton Kniff? Well, um, that, his, yeah, his art reminds me of, like you said, very classic, very... I mean, I mean, he's good, though. I mean, he is. Oh, yeah. His Captain America stuff he did recently was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, the story yeah. was all right, but the, the art was even better. Yeah, it's uh, it's he's also, you can tell he learned a lot from Alex Toth. 
the guy that designed a bunch of he was an old um he did a bunch of designs for Hanna Barbera and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Um, let me see here. Uh, so Tommy says playing with. I hope that says Tommy Sarkinen. Is it Tommy or Tommy? Uh, or is it Tommy? Or I don't know. I'm always bad with the names. Help me out. Playing with smiles does wonders. Hopefully there's still love in the story. Oh yeah, there's love. Trust me, there's love. In fact, that's part of the 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 part of the. Uh, the conflict is that he has a there's a young lady that he's been friends with since they were small since he was a youngling he, he's a youngling and everybody else are a small child uh, i'm trying to just make distinctions there too but anyway uh and they kind of fall in love with each other but again it's one of those things that they can't they, the, their their community won't allow them to be together so it creates a conflict like a beauty and the beast situation that's really more i should have said that first it's more of a beauty and the beast it's definitely inspired by that uh Critias, <laughs> Critias says, Bubba Squash would look good as my IP. Muhahaha. No. Force One, what's going on, man? Looks and sounds cool. Right on. Tommy says, drawing the webcomic a stream would draw people and perhaps bring additional money. You're probably right. Critias says, later, Elliot, be safe. Uh, thank you. Robwell says, have a great one. Later, mates. Art, what's going on, sir? Good stuff. But thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Jose Sanchez, what's up, man? Cross hatching looks sick and detail. Cool. Word. Will you ever do a stipple piece, and Michael? Why, why are you even on my stream? Why are you even on my why are you, why are you in my <laughs> chat, bro? Did I just not? Did you not hear what I just said about keeping things simple? Come on now, I would take for it. Yeah, I ain't trying to stipple. You're crazy. Anyway, guys, I appreciate y'all. Be good. Uh, stick around for a second. Not for yet. Uh, yep. I will talk to you guys next time. And God bless you guys. We'll be here together, holding hands. All right.